All right, welcome to another Space Duchador podcast. I am the Space Duchador, and today I got yourself an angle episode. That's right. I'm going to talk about angles and why this is the most important thing, literally, in everything, pretty much. So I got a quote. An explained joke is not a joke no more <laughs> so we can say the same about an angle right however this being the space lucido podcast and you're here to learn so i'm gonna go ahead and explain all of this for you so first we're gonna jump into the news video game news to be exact and of course had to be disney once again um, gamers play uh, paid one hundred and thirty dollars for early access play to three days, right? Or three days early access play to this sorry ass game, Star Wars Outlaws, which everybody knew sucked anyways. Now, why the hell would you pay one hundred and thirty dollars here? Anyways, that's not the debacle. At least for me, it is. That's not the problem though for the gamers here. The problem is apparently after these three days, right, they did a game patch. Now, for those who don't know, because they ain't gamers or whatever, um, this is where they go into the game to fix all the dumbass errors that the game has, which to me is like mind boggling already because it's like you release a game that's broke and you try to fix it after the fact. This, my friends, is stupid. But anyways. Anything stupider than that is basically anybody that paid $130 to get three-day early access play before everybody else. So basically, you're the test dummies, <laughs> right? Anyways, they patched the game, and now you have to, I guess, reload the game, right? I don't, I'm not even going to try to accurately um, explain what it is that goes on, but basically... Now your shit, all the saved game shit that you did in these three day access that you, by the way, you paid $130 for is no longer saved. It's over. <laughs> all your progress went down to shitter. So now you're just right back like everybody else, right? And there you go. That's the debacle. But above all that, I'm going to explain the angle. Here's the angle. This game sucks. There's no doubt about that, right? At all levels. Star Wars, you did it again. <laughs> right? Ubisoft, you did it again. You set the bar even lower with this patch. However, that's not the problem that I have. I'm like, whatever. I expect that from Ubisoft and Star Wars now, lately especially. I don't expect that from people. Although now I'm starting to expect it as well, right? Who the hell is going to pay $130 for early access play to just three days, right? You were asking for it. So moving on, idiots, right? Anyways, hope none of you, my listeners, actually did this dumbass move, right? I wouldn't have paid a damn dime. Hell, I wouldn't have played it for free. And I'm not going to. So there you go. So, an explained joke is no longer a joke. That's the theme of today. So, we're going to go ahead and talk UFC news. Now, this is important. All right. Today's show is basically an explanation into what literally a handful of people understand on the face of the planet. Now, this is going to touch professional wrestling, boxing, UFC, uh, what is this, programmers. And I don't mean video game programmers, but pretty much <laughs> only on a different level. Um, promoters, all of this. Now, why is this important, Space Lucha? Well, because this is literally, right, how relationships work as well. No one does the damn connections but Space Luchador, right? So you'll hear it here first. So let's jump in. So. Dana White does an interview on the Contender Series. 
And for those who don't know what that is, it's basically f- new fighters that are competing to get, you know, noticed by Dana White and get a contract and all this. Even though they technically they already are fighters and are already being noticed by the UFC and all this shit. But, you know, that's why it's called the contenders, like a lower level. Uh, basically, n- NXT, right, to the WWE. Proving once again that I know what I'm talking about. See, now you see right there, it's the exact same thing. UFC is professional wrestling. However, for some reason, the people over at the UFC do not know this. Now, they're the same company as well. That's a whole other angle. Now, we're not going to get into that for now. Right now, they did the, number, the the contender series, and they go doing the interview, and then somewhere in the interview... Um, the reporters, and this is the problem. These are the UFC official reporters for the sport, which by the way, right? Once you become that, you are now in the circle of promoting the UFC. So you must understand that you must be in the same page. However, for some damn reason, there's a disconnect between the fighters, Dana White himself, the damn uh, reporters, the fans, It's like there's this disconnect, right, of what the UFC is all about. Not to mention the commission and all that other crap. But anyways, somebody does a a question and they ask about the big event for Mexican independence um, over at the Sphere. Now, Dana White being Dana White explains the angle inadvertently, but he does nonetheless, (laughs) right? And goes into a back and forth, which basically comes down to this. Dana White literally explains to the reporters, hey, um, MGM has been fucking with us pretty much for the last 20 years that we've done business, right? And it's not necessarily MGM. That's another thing you must understand. Now, for those that have seen any of the Space Luchador podcast from the past, right, once I've done recently... I've explained about lower level management, the finger. Now do you get it? The finger, lower level. These people somehow end up in these positions of power and they ruin the damn company and the business and everything that they touch. These people are cancer. Yes, I said it. Management. And it's always a dumb fuck for some damn reason. That's one of the laws of the universe. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Anyways, management, and by that, the people that manage the MGM Gram, right, have been fucking with Dana in the UFC, basically making hard to do actual business, even though they are doing business, which, by the way, shows you how stupid it is. Instead of actually getting together and trying to make some damn money, right? No, they're fucking with Dana White for the last 20 years. Anyways, long story short... Apparently, um, the MGM Graham fucked the UFC over out of a date for this Mexican independence thing. And therefore, that's how Dana ended up in the sphere. Right? Only Dana goes on to explain this to the reporters. Right? The behind the scenes is what I've been talking about. Being a a, a promoter is a whole nother game. Right? That people don't know. Everybody always quick to run their mouth. About, you know, like boxers making more money and you don't want to pay this. They don't even know a damn thing about what it takes to even get a date. And same thing with women. (laughs) Get a date, let alone keeping the date, right? And then putting everything together to get a damn card, right? Going in the date, the show and all this other shit. But anyways, the point is... Apparently, the MGM Graham just happened to give the date to Canelo. Now, here's where he explains the angle. Now, I explained the boxing thing and the UFC thing in another uh, podcast before. Now, for some reason, and this is the point, these damn reporters don't seem to understand that boxing in the UFC, right, is not the same thing. Boxing is dead. It literally is. Here's the proof. Right? It's on life support. Or it continues through scamming. 
angles. Check it out. So he says, all right, Canelo has a date. By the way, <laughs> Dana says, oh, and the, the card is guaranteed. Now, what does that mean? It means the MGM Grand guarantees, right, <laughs> the uh, ticket sales and all that other shit. Basically, the card is sold. Now, same thing. This has happened in professional wrestling. That's why I told you. The UFC is professional wrestling. It's the same damn thing, right? However, they don't know it yet. They don't know how to work it the way it's supposed to be. Hence why you get this shit. But anyway, uh, the Canelo card has been bought by the MGM Grand, meaning it's guaranteed. They already got their money, whether they sell tickets or not. Therefore, it's no longer a legitimate event. Correct. You understand now? Because it doesn't matter how many butts in seats you get. It doesn't matter. It is bought by the damn MGM Graham. Does that make sense now? And then the reporters are sitting there going, well, what do you think about competing against Canelo? Do you think first of all, you're not competing against Canelo or boxing for that matter or the date? That is stupid. Dana just literally told you the damn card. The card is bought and paid for. You understand? Ain't competing against the damn thing. It's paid for. That's it. Not to mention UFC is not boxing. Right? That's so that right there, you can tell there's no competition at all. Right? That's just a giving. And that's the point. They don't get it. But anyways. This turns into this. <laughs> Got a little video clip of what makes things important, right? Um, and in this case, we're going to talk about legitimacy, right? And value and all these things. Now, I can go on and on about all this. But like Uncle Chael himself says, only a handful of people on the face of the planet understand this, right? And I'm one of them. So... To basically explain once again, right? Dana, right, is now going to do the Mexican independence every year, right? They ask him in the same damn interview about, hey, so do you know the WWE is turning their, uh, their development department to the Las Vegas? Dana goes and says, I don't know a damn thing. I don't care. <laughs> I nothing to do with the wwe this my friends is an angle <laughs> he should if he's not right because with the same company both the wwe and the ufc are owned by the same damn company and therefore they are now the same damn entity do you understand now anyways there's a future angle. Dana White has says this has well said this in the past and has said it over and over again. His biggest interest of them all is to take over Mexico. That's right. Well, guess who else is trying to take over Mexico? The WWE. That's right. Who moved and put a performance center, right? Basically a training facilities. In Mexico City, the UFC. That's right. <laughs> and long and behold, the WWE are moving their performance center, basically training center, to Las Vegas, Nevada, the fighting capital of the world. <laughs> now do you see the angles, right? Anyways, this is beautiful, right? Because like, he's talking all this shit. And the damn reporters just don't seem to get a damn thing. They're clueless to all of this. <laughs> right? Anyways, this leads to this, which is a whole nother. It's a UFC math. Basically, what makes sense in fighting and what gives the whole damn thing. Anyways, right? What makes this tick, basically? You know what I mean? So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and play it and then... Uh, Go ahead and explain and end this podcast for today. But again, quote of the day, a joke, right? It's no longer a joke once it explained, right? Anyways, put it on. 
Did what? Is, is John Jones the pound for pound goat? He's the pound for pound best fighter in the world, and he's the goat. And you all know this. <laughs> Numbers don't lie. Does he have pictures of you? <laughs> I, I, I saw that on the internet too. Are you guys that fucking stupid? You can't be that fucking stupid. There you go. See, <laughs> he doesn't seem to understand. That's why he told him, are you guys that fucking, you can't be this stupid. However, what Dana White fails to realize is at the same thing that I'm starting to realize that, yes, people all over the world, not, I don't know if they're necessarily that stupid as so they just don't understand it and see it for some reason. But anyways, let's continue. I think that John Jones is not the pound for pound best fighter in the world and the GOAT. But maybe he's are. not going to talk to any of us either because right now, <laughs> what do you mean? Because he's watching this and we're all saying, you know, questioning you and, uh, <laughs> yeah, ha, question me. How do you, how do, how do you, who, who's better than John Jones? Who's, who's pound for pound better than No, John? okay, John. At what point does no. activity come into play, right? I mean, we all agree there is nobody better than John Jones. He's the greatest of all time. There's no question about it. But at some point when you're looking at rankings, they do have to represent what's happening in the organization at that moment, right? Why? <laughs> Why the hell does your little rankings have to represent a damn thing? That's the point. See, this is the disconnect. And this is the part where I jump in and explain. The UFC runs exactly like a professional wrestling promotion that's what makes sense not the dumbass rankings which by the way are run by the dumbass promoters and some of the fans who are putting their inputs at 10 cents of shit that they do not know what the hell they talking about that's the problem right when dana goes into the war room right to set up matches and all this shit the rankings don't mean a damn thing it's what value the value the value behind each fighter the lore all the every shit that the whole things that i'm always talking about the lore you can't f with the lore right that's what gives it the true value there's a hidden mathematics here right to connect it to everything that i always talking about in relationships same thing hidden value the lore that's what really counts not the rankings and whether does it come in play and all this other stuff but it, i mean it would if you were doing something else but in this case right we're matchmaking same thing with when, when you're dating a girl you're matchmaking believe it or not but let's continue that time and in the past three years he's had one fight and you yeah. thought he lost to uh, uh reyes huh and when he fought Reyes, you said you thought Reyes won the fight. He didn't win the fight. John Jones did. But you said you thought he won the fight. Who gives a shit? I'm not the fucking judges. The guy <laughs> didn't win the flu. He didn't lose the fight. And, and the one loss that he has is from a referee that should have never been a referee in a million years. He's never lost. We were just talking tonight. These kids that come in here that are undefeated, you know how hard it is to stay undefeated? John Jones went through murderer's row. When you talk about activity, um, and he's fought one time, but John Jones was supposed to fight. If John Jones was sitting on the couch and saying, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to fight again, then he's definitely not in the pound-for-pound -pound discussion right now. He was, he was scheduled to fight, and he got injured. He is an active fighter. He is absolutely an active fighter. And, and, and when you talk about pound-for-pound, -pound, and I don't want to shit on any of my other guys, but it, who, who is it right now, Islam? Islam, many people believe, lost to the guy who's a weight class below him. Is that how pound for pound works? Many people, including people in this room. But he got the win. It doesn't right. matter what we do. You're, you're absolutely right. But he fought a weight class down. He fought a weight class down. John Jones fought a weight class up. And let me tell you. There you go. <laughs> they know why it's frustrated that he is sitting there trying to explain this simple, simple thing. It's the mathematics that these guys don't get. Right. Just said it right there. He fought a weight class down, not a weight class up. There is a difference. You don't date down, you date up. <laughs> Amazing. But there you go, right? Not only that, 
but he's literally explaining to him, yes, he hasn't fought, but that doesn't matter. That's what gives him the value. It's the undefeated streak. Now, whether you believe or not that he lost the damn fight, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, he didn't. He won. In the record book, he won. <laughs> it's clean. That's how you set up a fight. Versus a goat. Versus a goat. In this case, right? It's John Jones versus Steve Bay. That's what makes sense. And these dumbass reporters are talking crap about how John Jones ain't the goat because he hasn't even fought and he's been on the shelf, right? But that's not how this works. <laughs> not this, right? And then Stipe's on the shelf too. Yes, but both Stipe and John Jones both agreed to fight, right? Now, when these dumbass reporters are like, whoa, Espen all this and the other guy and then all these fucking guys every time they had a chance to step up they don't they don't do immediate rematches they don't fight everybody right they negotiate for money you got Singano doing the same shit who's the active right now world heavyweight champion that's John Jones <laughs> that's it right and he wants to fight Stipe why because Stipe has this little thing called the greatest heavyweight fighter title of all. And it's not the championship belt, but it's the title that counts. You understand? Anyways, here you go. Tell you what, when all the guys were in there, you had the John Jones, the Anderson Silvas, and the George St. Pierre's. I know who wanted to fight who and who didn't want to fight who. And John Jones has always been willing to fight everybody. There you go. <laughs> you see the difference? That's why Dupree, for example, right? And then we're gonna go we're gonna go a weight class down. That's why Dupree doesn't have the cred. He doesn't get the cred because he was supposed to give Strickland a straight up direct rematch. That's what you do as a champion. Right? Speaking of champion, see, when you're a champion, the champion, you get two privileges. One is you get to choose who the hell you want to give a championship match title opportunity, right? That's one of your privileges. Privilege number two, if for some reason you get your ass handed to you, right? Undecisively in this, by this, I mean like some cheap shot or the referee stoppage or, you know, something, well, not referee stoppage, but more of a, yeah, like some fluke freak accident where the judges somehow steal it from you you have the right to ask for an immediate rematch that's correct and then the new champion right has the he has the responsibility to give that rematch it's not that hard it really ain't right now i know this because i I'm a professional wrestler. I know how this shit works. Well, I'm saying it. Right? You look like a bitch. Right? And not a true champion when you refuse to give the guy the rematch. Because you know you didn't really win. You somehow pulled it off. You stole it. But you ain't about to give him a rematch. Because you know deep down if this rematch happens. Right? You got all <laughs> the possibilities of getting your ass handed to you and therefore that doesn't make you the true champion that's how this works anyways let's continue you know what i mean the only real mark with me with john jones it was uh and it was his fucking team that he was with at that time who i could tell you 50 fucking stories about the jail sonnen fight when, 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 when they were refusing to fight Chael Sonnen. You know what I mean? But other than that, John Jones has fought everybody that's ever been put in front of him. He went through murderer's row. Uh, you know, and if you look at who he fought at the time when he fought them, look at the record of the guys combined that he fought. And the list just goes on and on. That makes him the greatest fighter of all time. Not the greatest active fighter because he is not an active fighter. He has fought he, one time in over four years. He is an active fighter. He just got injured. He was going in. But he hasn't fought. 
and he was going in to fight at heavyweight again. Okay. A weight class above. But that, that and he fucking good. destroyed the guy who was the best guy in the division. But that's an unfortunate thing, and I. <laughs> it's not an unfortunate thing. Yeah, for the fans that paid a damn ticket. <laughs> See what I'm saying? These guys are fucking idiots. Everybody forgot about that fight, huh? The ridiculous ass fight where John Jones literally goes up to heavyweight after all these damn years. Literally, we're waiting. Goes up to heavyweight to fight this damn, uh, I forgot his damn name. That goes to show you right there his legacy, that his name just got erased after John Jones went in there and erased his ass. Right? <laughs> Who was it that, uh, fuck? Is that Fran from France? Fuck, I forgot his name. Anyways, he finally goes to heavyweight. He goes in there, literally throws no damn punches, maybe a couple of shadow box uh, shadow boxing right nobody hit nobody john jones takes him down and chokes his ass out ridiculous ass fight <laughs> and basically a letdown and rip off to anybody that paid a damn ticket right because they didn't get the fight that they were wanted they didn't get nothing just saw a ridiculous ass guy get choked the hell out outclassed in every which way and ever since then john jones is just the champion then Singano goes on, right? Who was the last hope? Singano goes on to get knocked the hell out in boxing, and there you go. Now we're in this damn debacle, right? Who the hell does John Jones face, right? The only runner up, right, is the guy that beat Singano once, lost to Singano once, right? And beat John Jones' greatest rival, right? Who is Cormier, by the way. It only makes sense that it's Stipe. Which, by the way, this is a super fight. Dream fight. Because, right, John Jones has to win for him to fight um, whoever the hell anybody wants. So this is what we want. Both, I, bet, I guarantee, both Dana and I want John Jones to win. Right, because then he can continue the legacy. As for Stipe, it's his last fight, <laughs> which is the point that these dumbass reporters do not understand and get. Here they are trying to do their little stats and rankings and all this other shit. Stipe is out of the game. He cannot be ranked or stacked or any of that shit because there is no future for him. This is it. This is a super fight dream match you understand either way win or lose he's out the game right most likely but that's anyways that's the point so when you're in the war room making these damn decisions about who the hell you're gonna fight right it only makes sense that it has to be john jones versus stipe why well let's do a quick math right ufc uh, mma math here stipe can whoop anybody's ass in all the divisions under the heavyweight division. That's a fact. John Jones can whoop everybody's ass under his division. And there you go. You have the two best, period, in the UFC. How do I know this? Well, because the only other guy that can do all that was Cormier. Cormier can beat the hell out of everybody, right, from the heavyweight down right now, quite literally. There's no one. Just out of simple, straight up math. There you go. Both Stipe and John Jones have beat Cormier. So there you go. Right? But anyways, let's finish this off. And I think everybody here, if he was active, if he had fought one more time, would say he's number one. He was active. He was. He blew he his fucking shoulder out in training and then had to recover and is still coming back and fighting okay, that fight. So, so here's the argument. You could say he that is we don't know anything. John Jones you is, could say is that we active. Don't know. No, see, that's what you do. You talk over us, so we can't answer. I, I apologize. You go ahead. So if we, if, if he fought and we don't put him number one, 
then you have that argument to say you don't know what the hell you're talking about. We are all, I, I think everybody in this room is saying he's the greatest fighter of all time. And I think most people in this room would say he is the number one pound for pound fighter of all time. But you have to, you can't just sit on your laurels from something you did f three, four, five years ago. So, is, so when was the Cyril Gone fight? Since Islam, he, he hasn't fought in 18 months. Okay. Okay, and it's going to be 20 months by the time he gets in the ring. So that, assuming he gets in the ring, right? We don't know he's going to, you know, he's going to be healthy. So all, all I think everybody is saying, and the argument against you is the fact that most people who do pound for pound lists have a one-year cutoff unless they're, you know, uh, they had a fight scheduled at the time. So John fell out of pound for pound lists because it was over a year and he didn't have a fight schedule. He did. He doesn't he have did. a... <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. This proves everything I've always said. Right? Look at this guy. You got this reporter literally saying, Well, you talk over us, and then you got this excuse, and, and we, uh, I, I talk for everybody here in the room. Blah, 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 blah. You fucking idiots. It's amazing. Right? So, in this case, where it's more clearer than anything, right? Here, you're trying to put the whole, Well, he's on the shelf. And he hasn't fought for over who, who, how many months and all this. Also, so for John Jones, who is, by the way, the pound for pound and greatest and right undefeated and active heavyweight UFC champion, right? For him, you're doing all this dumbass math. But then when Connor, who literally loses a damn fight, breaks his dumbass ankle, does all sorts of stupid shit outside the damn octagon and's out for years, and you're quick and happy to. Connor's back and Connor's back and everybody's ready to suck his nads. Right? Same with every other fighter or any other boxer. Right? But in this case, when it makes fucking sense, they don't get it. <laughs> this is amazing. It really is. Right? And this proves the whole thing. There's a disconnect between the damn reporters here and the UFC and the MGM Graham, and Joe Rogan, we're all in the same damn business, and for some reason, these guys are acting, right, they're literally putting, it's, it's almost like you, you're the captain of the, chi of the ship, right, and you, you're trying to sail somewhere, and no one's rowing, <laughs> your crew is not rowing, and unbeknownst to you, one of your crew members, right, just threw down that fucking thing they used to basically stop a boat, right? What's that thing? The ankler? <laughs> that metal piece that you put. So you, so the damn boat literally stays there, right? It's basically an uh, emergency brake. <laughs> Amazing. You got Joe Rogan on his podcast basically explaining angles and all sorts of shit. Botching the damn fights, right? You got these dumbass reporters, right? Literally fighting um, because of the fighter pay when they don't understand how the hell that damn works or the programming or any other stuff. But anyways, there you go. I don't really think we need to continue with the because he goes back and forth <laughs> to the point where he's like, well, fuck you guys. I'm going home. Right. And John Jones is the pound for pound. Right. And he's going to fight Stipe, period. That's it. Right? And no, you guys do not make the damn uh, uh, value here. Right? But anyways, there you go. I hope you got a little bit of insight because I'm pretty sure for some reason, you know, I could explain it over and over and over again. For some reason, people don't understand this. Right? They don't understand angles. Same with women. Same thing. It's the same damn explanation. You're dating a girl, right? It's been months. You're trying to get somewhere. You're the captain of the ship. And she ain't rowing. <laughs> and if you get one that's really, you know, toxic, as they say, she will put, unbeknownst to you, <laughs> the damn ankler <laughs> to stop you in your damn tracks. But there's a reason for that. But we're not going to talk about that for now because, there's, you know, we, you ain't that advanced yet. So there you go. So then with that, we got... Um, an explained joke is no longer a joke. Same with an angle. An explained angle is no longer an angle. 
But for the sake of the Space Digital Podcast, I will explain to you at least what an angle is and why it's important. Why this is at the core of movie making, video game making, action figure selling, right? Arena sellings, right? What else? Relationships, dating, politics, right? Uh, Conspiracy theories, everything at the core. Hell, life itself is one big angle. However, right? Again, you ain't there yet. I would blow your mind if I started to at give you all of these damn secrets, right? I'm trying. I tried in the beginning, but nobody cared, right? No views. I don't know what it is. But too advanced, I don't know. But I hope you got some insight. Uncle Chael's, right? Like he said. Oh, yeah, he went on to do a video about John Jones and uh, Steve A. And this and that. And he was talking about a different angle. But the angle was that everybody believes, and this is mind-boggling to me, everybody believes, right? For some reason, they don't want to see the fight because Stipe doesn't make sense to them. Why? Like, when it's stupid, it's like, no. No, actually, Aspinall. They want Aspinall to fight John Jones, which is, like, stupid because that's what he was explaining. He's like, well, see, you people want Aspinall because you're a bunch of damn sheep. You and the reporters think that Aspinall should be the next to fight the championship because you're looking at it all wrong. You ain't thinking three-dimensionally, Morty, right? You want Aspinall to fight John Jones with the belief, right, that he can beat him. But what, what Chael Sonnen was explaining was that there's a difference between believing that he can beat him, right, and then there's a whole other belief can he and will he is a two different big ass things and yes both are calculatable and by that i mean the math anybody can beat john jones will he is a whole nother fucking see that's the problem you can believe all you want right can aspinall beat john jones yeah any name yeah hell some big fluke it could happen never say never Will he, however, is the hidden math. That's the problem. (laughs) Right? Right? Because we all know deep down, John Jones is going to whoop his ass. That's it. (laughs) History has shown us this. Right? You have the belief that he can beat him. Yeah. Now, will he is a whole nother story. Hence why, once again, John Jones versus Stipe, that's the fight. Because we don't necessarily want to see, right, Stipe beat John Jones as to can he We want to see what happens. We want to see a fight, right? We want to see actual fucking fight. We want to see John Jones get pushed to his limit. Who can do it right now? Who has shown us that maybe he can? Stipe, right? And they're both putting something on the line and it ain't the belt, right? John Jones is putting his undefeated streak against Steve Bay's right greatest heavyweight <laughs> um, title greatest heavyweight to ever compete title which I know there's no belt for it but he's got that title he is known for being the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time now John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time you see now what they're putting up for this fight now knowing the UFC if we even get there (laughs) hopefully they deliver so there you go right it is a perfect send off to a good champion and this is what people don't understand right Stipe knows that if he's gonna go out he might as well go out to the best of the best Right In a blaze of glory. This is the true value and meaning of why we do these damn fights in the first place. Right? 
The belt is testament to that so that you can, you know, bitch and moan about how you're the best. That's why the belt was created. But anyways, I'm going to get into all that. There you go. Um, so there you go. If you like this video and slash podcast, right, and show, give me a like, share, subscribe, you know. I'm telling you, I'm showing you the damn angles, right? Not sure. This one got a little bit complicated here and there, right? I hope uh, you guys, my viewers, you understand it and it's starting to all make sense, right? That there is a hidden math and the Space Luchador program can explain quite literally everything. I've said it. I've said it before, right? And like some lady, right? <laughs> One time I was uh, talking in real time, debating this lady. And... I beat her. <laughs> Every single talking point she had, she thought she could outwit, outthink, outtalk the space loser. Hell no, I had it all. Brought my A game. And then when she knew that I was more, way more, right? Logical, philosophical, all this stuff. I had them all, all the answers. She was like, oh, you have an answer for everything. I'm like, well, yeah, but it's ain't because, I'm, you know, I just do. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> right? She turns around and says, well, I refuse. That's what her straight up words were. I refuse to give you the, uh, what was it, the title of being right. I ref You are not right because you can't. In my world, and these were her exact words, in my world, there cannot be somebody that figured it out. Life is too complicated. She gave me this big speech. Life is too complicated. And all these little things. And, 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 and you can't be the one. Right? So instead of just looking at the answers and saying, oh, shit. Okay. You're right. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Well, teach me, master. I don't know. Something. No. Nah. She took the blue pill and decided to believe whatever the hell she want. And her big belief, which was, you know. Basically, everything she knew up to that point was now replaced with this belief that me, let alone me, couldn't be it couldn't be possible that just this random dude she met knew everything about the secrets of the universe. So there you go <laughs> and therefore refused to learn a damn thing moving forward. And while that is a double edged sword, because, you know, <laughs> it, again, it goes back to motive. She just refused, right, to give me the W and therefore took the L out of sheer spite, right, <laughs> and ego and all that other crap. Hey, well, there you go. I'll see you on the next Space Luchador podcast.